Hello everyone, my name is Adija. Welcome to the Millennial Social Worker channel. Thank you so much for joining me again today. On this channel, I talk about social work, I talk about mental health, wellness, lifestyle, and everything else in between. And this is because the millennial social worker is multifaceted. <laughs> Today, I'll be talking to you about emergency room social work. During the course of this video, you might hear me say emergency room or emergency department. Just know that those two terms are used oftentimes interchangeably and that I'm talking about the same setting. I want to preface this video by saying that this video intends to provide you with a general knowledge about the field of ER social work and should not in any way be a substitute for you talking to an academic advisor or career advisor. Remember that the requirements and the scope of practice for social work may vary by state, jurisdiction, or the company that you're looking to work for. With that said, if you're interested in learning more about what ER social workers do, keep on watching. The ER social worker is an advanced practice clinician who is an integral part of the emergency department's care team. ER social workers work closely with multiple care team members. This includes the physicians, the RN case managers, nurses, ER technicians, and other ancillary services. Oftentimes, your clinical judgment and assessments are needed in order for you to be able to determine an appropriate plan of care for a patient. And sometimes the doctors don't even discharge a patient until they have talked to a social worker. To be an ER social worker, you should have a master's degree in social work as well as a clinical license. Depending on your state, you may be able to work in an ER with a bachelor's degree in social work. I've actually seen BSWs that work in the ER as well. Some employers may require that you already have what is called the BLS for healthcare provider. The BLS stands for basic, basic life support and is a specialty training that allows you to be able to provide a first response to a patient that might be in crisis. I wouldn't be too worried about getting a BLS certificate before you get a job as an ER social worker because oftentimes what happens is the hospital that you're looking to work for, they have trainers on staff or they also have companies that they've partnered with, local community uh, companies that they've partnered with that provide those trainings. This training is usually eight hours long for people that are new. And if you're just getting recertified, you only have to attend a four hour training and it just teach you basic life support. Now we'll move on to what ER social workers do. The ER social worker evaluates the psychosocial needs of patients as well as complete a psychiatric assessment for patients that may be in the ER for psychiatric reasons. Sometimes you're consulted, requested. There are different ways that you can be consulted to provide these services to patients that come through the ER. As an ER social worker, you take a very proactive role by providing early interventions as well as a collaborative practice is with the care team. You also work closely with the payer sources, you know, the insurance companies and other outside agencies. I would say you'll be working a lot with payer sources and outside agencies because sometimes when you have a patient that's in a hospital for psychiatric reasons, you have to work with the payer sources to see what hospital you can send the patients to for inpatient psych and other out, you know, and work with other outside agencies as well. This is just for you to ensure that you're providing the proper interventions for your patients and making sure that you're also providing appropriate discharge. ER social workers provide services for people of all ages. Not unless you work in a specialty hospital such as a children's hospital or geriatric hospital, you will be providing services to people of all ages. So you have to be comfortable with working with people of all ages. Here are some of the uh, types of services that ER social workers provide. The ER social workers provide services that include but are not limited to behavioral health assessment, they do substance abuse assessment as well as referrals, they do inpatient psychiatric admission referral as well as the coordination of the transfer to an inpatient psych unit or hospital. ER social workers diagnose mental illnesses, so you have to be very familiar with the DSM and knowing what 
you know, the different criteria are for diagnosing a patient with a specific mental illness, provide information, you know, to family to help them understand what the illness that their loved one is going through, what, you know, what, what that whole uh, illness, the situation is about. ER social workers also provide treatment recommendations and options for adjusting to the hospital setting. A lot of times, I mean, none of us go to the hospital frequently like that. So you don't know what the hospital culture or what is expected, you know, the patient role in the hospital, basically. ER social worker will help patients to adjust to the hospital setting. ER social workers also provide discharge planning. They do coordination of home care, as well as coordination of durable medical equipment, such as a cane or walker, if a patient needs to have that. I think this is the most important work that we do, which is advocating for patients. ER social workers advocate for patients. So now let's move on to some of the working conditions of being an ER social worker. The ER is a very fast paced setting. <laughs> as, as I've stated, you know, in prior videos, many medical settings are very fast paced. It's a fast paced environment. And the ER is no exception. Just think about the emergency department, emergency room, you have a lot of people coming in. So it's a very fast paced environment. And in fact, I think that the ER is probably at the, at the top of that list when we talk about a fast-paced medical setting. There, there's a lot of physical demands of this job. This line of work requires physical ability and stamina. You will be doing a lot of walking, standing for prolonged periods of time. So, so you have to be able to keep up with that. ER social workers, some of the working conditions also include crisis intervention. As you can already imagine, the ER is a place where there are many crises that arise and many crisis situations, and you may be consulted several times during your shift to provide crisis services ranging from providing support to someone who just lost a loved one or assessing a patient experiencing a mental health crisis. So crisis intervention is one of the you know conditions of the job. Also moving on to work hours, you may be required to work weekends or you may be required to work late on some days, depending on how busy, you know, the ER is. So be, you know, be prepared for that. Of course, you're going to have the allotted hours where you work, whether it's, you know, six to two 30 or seven to three 30 or eight to four 30, or you're doing a 12 hour shift, but just expect that sometimes you would have to work over just so you can complete a case and finish up, you know, tie up the loose ends of a case that you're working, um, on. Many hospitals have 24 hour social work coverage and they have systems in place that decrease the possibility of you working over. But trust me, <laughs> there will be times where you have to work over so that you can, you know, tie up the loose ends of, of whatever case it is that you're working on, you know, completing a referral, finishing up an assessment, you know, there will be times where you have to, you know, work over. Some additional resources that I want to provide, I'll be sure to leave the link down below because I think it was very useful You know, when I was taking a look at it for people that are trying to become ER social workers in the future, this resource will help you to understand the role better in addition to watching this video. All right, if you've learned something new from this video, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. You should also follow me on Instagram. I am on Instagram at millennial underscore social worker so that you can keep up with me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've been able to learn a thing or two from this video and I'll see you next time on my next video. God bless you and take care. Bye.